Can I go back to the, the initial concept you brought up around imposter syndrome? And which, which I would agree, almost every person I've worked with in the last 20 years has had some self-worth issues, not feeling good enough, and there's many, many reasons why people come to those types of conclusions. The empathy, okay, instead of you're here, you're here, they're there, when you shift from a me focus to a you focus, does that inherently get them out of that trap of asking those negative questions and connecting to those limiting beliefs that are inside? Well, there's usually two, there may be more, but there are two major co contributors to an imposter syndrome. One is I'm incompetent. I, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm hiding it. The second uh, is the world doesn't know that I don't care about it. I care about me. And so I, I'm not saying don't develop competence. You got to be competent because that, because if you're not competent, then you're then you're caught lying. You're BSing people. But I go into the other one, and so when you go to there, there, and you live uh, to be of service. So I'll share something else because I'm 72. I don't think any of your viewers, you know, if you're a viewer and you, you, you probably, I got you by 30 years. So this would be a good time for you to go to the bathroom because you're not gonna, this is not relevant to you, but it's relevant to me. Um, uh, I've had seven mentors, my last, they've all died. My last one was a guy named Warren Bennis, big leadership guy. Um, the only thing that he was that was greater than the respect people had from him was the love they had for him. But towards the end of his life, when we would meet, I remember there was one time he said, you know, Mark, I'm trying to be a good sport. I said, what do you mean? He said, you know, they parade me around the USC business school to the MBAs and they say, oh, you know, he wrote all these leadership books, but I'm irrelevant. You know, you know, people, these young people, you know, I'm irrelevant and I'm trying to be a good sport because I got to be relevant into my 80s. A lot of people aren't relevant, you know, after they push 70. And so I'm trying to be a good sport, but it hurts to be irrelevant. And that really stuck with me. So the way uh, I remain relevant, I believe, is I identify young people who are talented hardworking, but they have to have values that are beyond just them. They don't just say the words, I want to make a difference. It's a calling they can't get out of their head. And the difference has to benefit other people. And so the way to be relevant, if you're into your 70s, is, do, is find those people and do everything you can to help them land in their future and do everything you can to help them distill what that future is, because we've all heard the expression, you know, you know, don't work too much in your business, you got to work on your business. So I would say, you know, something else you have to work on is, well, why were you born? What do you, you know, besides family and what were you meant to do? Do you have any idea what that is? That's what my wake up call is about. Hmm. Um, that's my opening question. So uh, what's the purpose and your calling that you can't get out of your head? And then, you know, what were the wake up calls that led you there? And so, so I'm doing this there, there on steroids because I'm, I'm blessed by, and I don't have rooms for more mentees, but, uh, but I'm blessed by the people because we'll drill in and it takes away that part of my imposter thing about making it about me because, because they feel cared about, and they are. 